Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to be discussing my thoughts and processes working on this awesome commission called Blightheads. So before getting the opportunity to work in this commission, I had been craving working on some kind of reptilian, crocodilian sculpture anyway. A crocodile was actually one of my very first 3D sculptures in general, so it felt like it was about time to go back and try to kind of style again. So you can imagine from the very, very beginning just how excited and motivated that I was to get started and to get really deep in and stuck into this. So, Blighthead is a Caprasuchus inspired character. I believe it's a bit of a kaiju as well. I know it has some Godzilla-like features around the back crusting as well. But either way, just something big, scary, reptilian, lots of deep defined scales, big teeth, just something really, really fun to work with and just my kind of thing. So when it came to the overall structure of the design, I tried to make it rather close to the original concept I was given, but I was granted the freedom of using my own interpretation, so I did try to make it just a little bit spikier, a little bit scarier looking. In fact, I took a lot of inspiration from Godzilla with this and tried to give it a bit of a piercing expression, where the eyes were a little bit narrowed, more like very stern looking, and also that the mouth was just ever so slightly open, kind of snarling, but not quite since it was described that Blight's head has a yellow tongue and a yellow inside of the mouth, which otherwise wouldn't have really shown here had I made the character with a closed mouth, which I did in the end, but by making it just slightly open, it just gave it that little bit extra dimension, a little bit of an extra personality, but also revealing that yellow mouth. I really did enjoy the overall structure of creating a jaw. One thing that's really unique about crocodiles and one of the reasons why I was looking forward to making just any crocodilian kind of sculpture is the fact that their teeth are very... they, they protrude outwards a lot. A lot of my sculptures recently have had the teeth kind of hidden behind lips or the teeth that maybe just have like one set of canines are exposed. Overall the teeth are very much a smaller subject for a lot of my previous sculpts recently. So doing this one, having the lips, the mouth, the entire jaws and everything bend around the teeth, where the teeth are the more dominant feature, it was really fun to work with that and to think about how certain parts of the lips and snout kind of fold inwards. It's a bit tricky to describe, but I'm sure if you look at any picture of a crocodile, you'll see exactly what I mean, where the teeth are very dominant and take up a lot of space in their mouth. So that was very fun to work with. Also trying to get some of the ridges, some of the osteoderms and such, since this is obviously going to be covered in a lot of scales, but it also has to be covered in some harder, tougher scales, kind of like a bit of armor plating in a way. Definitely around the back with the classic Godzilla-like spikes, but also around the face as it did have a bit of a ridge upwards around the eyes and a little bit around the cheekbone area. I suppose a little bit around the nose as well actually. Saying that, crocodile noses is something I do not have much practice with at all. That was another thing I was quite excited to try out because I have like a very classic kind of nose which I never normally do. So again, that was a fun little challenge there. Yeah, like I said, overall I just had a really, really fun time working on the overall proportions of the head, really trying to nail in that crocodile appearance, but also adding these much, much larger canine teeth, or large teeth in general in fact, because not only is it based on a Caprasuchus, which normally has significantly larger teeth anyway, but it is a original character, it's an OC, which means imagination is key, and in this scenario it has much, much larger than usual teeth. It really presented a very interesting dynamic dynamic, especially because the longer a tooth is, the thicker it is as well, and it meant the whole embedding into the mouth thing I described earlier was getting a bit trickier, I was really having to kind of jug it around, try and make it look like, you know, it makes sense, that it's not just randomly stabbing into the skull, or it's not just floating in the gum, really trying to make it anatomically make sense, while still keeping that fantasy, that imaginary kind of vibe to it. Again, I just really, really had fun with this one. So of course, by the time I was complete with the actual base structure of the head itself, my first point of detail was around the eyes, of course, just like a little bit of uh, wrinkles and creases around the eyes, as you always do. But then my biggest priority was all the little nooks and crannies, all the creases all around the teeth and gums. Again, just really driving home that crocodilian kind of feature there. 
I spent a tremendous amount of time working on that. And then after that were the scales. I was given free reign and I was allowed to just really go nuts on the scales, which admittedly did take quite some time, but it was a good opportunity to one, try to do some realistic scales, and two, to try and learn efficient methods of doing it. I did start off manually applying a bunch of individual scale alphas onto the skin around the snout and the teeth. After a while, after I'd placed a significant portion of them, I then used a much larger cluster alpha to just apply a mess of scales, but with a much lighter pressure. That way it gave me like a bit of a rough outline to use the damn standard tool and just cut a line around every single individual scale. Now, what about painstaking? I would admit it was also a little bit quick and that is because after all I charged by the hour by commissions and I really did not want to spend you know hours upon hours upon hours working on this I was a little bit quick to do it but again it's a good opportunity to try and learn efficient techniques and this is what I was really quite happy with in the end just a general process of using a light pressured cluster of scales alpha and then manually drawing all the scales individually afterwards it meant that the planning and the patterning was already there applied for me I just had to define it in the way that I wanted to. So I did that around the entirety of the head when it came to the neck. Fortunately, if you look up a real crocodile or alligator, the scales along their entire underbelly are very geometric, very, very squared, and they kind of transition into more circular, more like harder scales, in fact, as they go upwards to the midriff of their body and towards their back. So that part was fortunately very, very quick to do and also kind of satisfying in a way, just drawing all these little square parts <laughs> into the neck. And then once I had the entirety of the scales drawn the way I liked, I then used the clay polish function next to Dynamesh and use that to sort of tie it all together. It's very hard to describe, but basically it's a tool I would really, really recommend you experimenting with and just get a feel for the different sliders and options. I find it's very, very good for scales because what will happen is it kind of stitches everything together. It defines all the creases and ties them together so that they're not horribly round or too sharp or, Again, play the sliders and get a feel for it. It's so hard to describe, but it's a really good job of just leaching up the entirety of the structure and not just a certain area. It is very important that I did this towards the end of it, so I had to really stick to my guns and do the entirety of the scaling before using clay polish. Because once I use clay polish, I can't dye the mesh or edit any more of the mesh because it will then distort it quite heavily. But that's okay. Like I said, had a bit of an idea for what I was going for here and in the end it worked exactly as I had planned. Now for the colour scheme. Whew, I do love textures. Texturing is by far my favourite part. Uh, for this one, it actually went a bit back and forth here because when thinking about stripes on a reptile, there's a couple of different ways I can go about it. I can do either very large, bold, thick stripes like say a tiger, which some reptiles do have, or I could go with something very mottled, very kind of a messy kind of stripe texture like you see in a lot of paleo art where the stripes are very like thick and intertwined and overall kind of chaotic. I was a bit concerned to go that route because at the end of the day, this is based on the original artwork that the commissioner had sent to me. So I did try to go with very few stripes, exactly the places that they had in their artwork, but while also just trying to make them just a little bit mottled, a little bit messy, that way it blends into the rest of the textures, nothing too sharp and perfect because I really believe that when it comes to trying to attempt semi-realistic pieces, having a bit of dirtiness and a bit of messiness is so so important nature is very very messy nothing is incredibly clean and polished and i really try to avoid that when when it comes to these sculptures and that includes stripes and spots hence why you see throughout the sculpture even just in more basic tones such as around the neck the neck was meant to be just like a very simple very flat gray but despite that you'll see that i use all sorts of different alphas different shades different colors even a bit of brown and purple and green here and there just to really mess up the color scheme and again just give it a mottled look like i said i really really enjoy texturing i it's by far my favorite part of modeling and i just really went to town on this one especially again on the scales because i was given permission to continuously to go crazy on them so i made sure to outline every single individual scale with a bit of a dodgy looking alpha 
varying opacities and pressures. That's why the line art, if you will, around the scales was never too clean. We really tried to make it messy intentionally because while up close, it does look kind of chaotic. When you look at it from a distance, it just looks, in my opinion, very natural. Messy, but natural. And that is exactly what I was going for. Like I said, I had an absolute blast working on this. I was really craving working on some kind of crocodilian model anyway. This came at such the perfect time and I was granted just the right amount of freedom to really go nuts on this. And for that, I am so, so grateful. I know I say this every time, but I think this might be my new favorite sculpture I've done so far. I swear, just I've been really, really fortunate when it comes to these commissions. I've been given so much freedom lately. It just really allows me to push myself as hard as I can while still trying to maintain efficiency and timing. And it really lets me produce the best kind of commissions I can. And I'm just so, so happy about it. And of course, the most important part is, so was the buyer. They're happy, I'm happy, we're all happy. And my goodness, I cannot wait to work on my next model. Having learned all the techniques and just generally what I'm capable of from this commission here, I'm so excited for the next one. So there you have it. There is my thoughts and processes on this sculpture. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hope you may have learned a couple of things or feel inspired to try your own ones. Always try going out of your comfort zones if you can. Try new things, experiment and so on. You never know what you might be capable of. And I really could not recommend it more. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Cheers.